about um, setting up a decoy, a working decoy, um, some of the tools I use, um, and then a little bit of carving, talk about patterns and different tools and what they're used for. Um, so I've got a, a cutout here of a bluebell drake out of white cedar. Um, so we'll kind of get that set up for a carving and how I go about getting lines on it and kind of to the point where I am. Um, one thing too, I just want to sh show this quickly. Um, I think the duck blind, Willie McDonald, has a tutorial on their website with this. And this is kind of what we used when we cut out a bunch of uh, blue wing teal for Dave Jacobs' kids project. Um, so what it is, it's uh, some plywood, sides, like cut out one decoy on the top, one decoy or top, then they'll slide in like this. And then you don't have to go, you know, fit in a bandsaw like this. And you just cut to all of the this uh, all to there without cutting your plywood but just close enough and you can cut out a bunch of them very quickly and and when you cut and you draw your pattern all you got to do is cut out the top profile on your bandsaw and you can get so many more decoys out of a sheet of cork by doing this you can get as many as you can squeeze on there and it uh, saves a lot of time and uh, cork so we'll pass that around you can just take a gander at it but Eddie, uh, not Eddie, uh, the McDuck Blind has uh, on their website, there's a good supplier out of Michigan and they also have tutorials on there and how to do things. So just a quick note on that. So drawing up a pattern, I, I take, this is just some drawing tracing paper I use. So I'll draw up a side profile, a top profile, and then kind of some top of the head front of the head patterns and I'll sketch 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 and finally get you know to a point where you're satisfied with with something so it's kind of how I go about doing it I look for photographs a nice profile picture of a head um, and a lot of times I'll, I'll have a study bill and I'll use that for when I go to blow up the pictures I'll use the study bill and to blow up the pictures and then take the length of the study bill compare that to the picture you're blowing up and then that'll kind of get you proportionally sized out right so here's a pattern we'll run that around once i get uh once i get it uh drawn on a paper i'll take take that and transfer it to a little heavier paper and these are nice patterns just to throw in a file and hang on to Question for you, Tom. Yeah. Where do you like to make your neck joint when you're uh, making a duck? I mean, it's nice to have them square to everything in the world. Yeah. A lot of times the head position is a little bit difficult to do, especially if you're tuck head. A tuck head, yeah. So, uh, yep. any uh, thoughts on that? So, I always like the question is how do you, with your neck seam, where do you place it and how? Um, I always like running it parallel to the bottom. Um, if you if you don't want to do that and you run it in a, at an angle, and if you have a straight forward head, that that'll work. But if you want to turn the head a little bit, then, they yeah. then the head's going to be tilted one way or the other. So it's nice to have that parallel this this line that neck seam parallel to the bottom and level. That way, when you put your head on there, you can turn it any way you want and it'll be level. Now tuck heads are challenging. You can do a couple different ways. Um, how I do it, not saying it's right or wrong, but this is how I do it. Um, you can see my line there. That's where my neck seam is at on my pattern. So I'll take this off here. Oh, it's in there. So you can see, when I cut this decoy out, I cut it out on the body. So I carried that body in through here. And then where it flattens out, where you can see this line here, from there to there. That's how I cut it out. So I'm not getting rid of this, this shoulder area, or the back. 
at staying in there. Um, then I, when I cut my head out, even though this, this pattern looks like it stops there, I just carry it straight down. So essentially it's, I'll just kind of dot it in here. Like that. And then I'll take, um, once I get it, get uh, the body cut out, the head cut out, I'll draw a center line on the, on the body. And then I'll just draw a line through here somewhere. But straight across, all the way across. And then when you put your head on here, okay, you want it there, you want to move forward a little bit, you know, get it on, marked down the center, on the center line. And then if you want this head back farther, then you just take this line that you drew here and transfer it up on the head. So once you get it to where you want, so I'm basically right there is where I thought it looked nice. And you can always adjust it, move it back once you get it in. So I'll take it there, now, then I'll just transfer this line here onto the head, straight up. Do it on both sides. Then you, you got these lines here, coming straight across. Then you, once you got that mark there and there, run that straight across, you draw your center line on your head, drill your hole there, drill your hole here, and it should end up being right where you had drawn it so the lines match up. Then if you want it turned, now, to get that, to, that head to drop down to the shelf, um, I've got a drill press or a regular drill would work with the Forzner bit and you, I'd set that drill press with the Forzner bit so it can't go down any farther than the shelf. So I, I, so, so I vision, I turned it a little bit. So before I drill anything, it's sitting up like this. And then I just trace it like this here and then I go to the fours uh, drill press and just just slowly take that out you can see where I have a bunch of holes that I drilled that'll kind of bore that out down to the shelf so you have a nice flat shelf and then put your dowel in there and it sit, fits right in there so do you ever hollow out your head on, on a low Low head, I'd never do. Um, if it's an animated bird or a high-headed decoy, like a goose or a swan or a mallard that has a really high head, uh, then I, I'll cut the head in half down the middle. Uh, when I'm bandsawing it out, then I hot glue it together, carve the head, and then you put the hot the head in the oven. Just put it on low, preheat it to low setting. Put your head, shut it off. Put your head in there. It'll soften that glue up and then you can pull it apart. And then you can hollow your head out and then glue it together. So, but. Yeah. Why would you hollow the head out? Well, weight, you want the mass at the bottom, the okay. weight at the bottom. So if you have too much weight at the top, this gold and I didn't, I didn't uh, hollow out the head on that one, but. Um, but if it's if it's a say it's a leaning decoy where you got the head out there, um, that's a lot of mass and weight up top. The more weight and top you have up top, it's gonna wobble on you. Okay. Wobble one way or the other. So you wanna so if you get it lighter and you have more weight at the bottom, it's gonna be more stable. <coughs> but if it's a low head decoy, you shouldn't have to worry about it. So it's very rare I hollow out the head. Okay. So. Um, so then once we get to this point, um, I'll put, I always start with the center line. You can be really precise if you want or eyeball it. Another, another nice tool is uh, the centering uh, rulers. These are really nice. Um, Another trick is, I got some here, just a piece of paper. I can 
cheap piece of paper you can use as, as a centering tool. So I'll, just for example, I'll put a mark here where the body is, come across, put a mark there. I'll just put something here so I know where I was at. So, then I'll fold it in half. Go back to my mark there and there, and you can mark your center line. It says right on there. So that's just a quick, easy, cheap trick, and you can do that in a couple different places, and it 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 works every time. Once I get that center line on there, I want to draw just some reference marks, a side pocket. So I'm going to come draw this on there here. So what I'm doing is following the top, the shoulders, how they come in there. So the nice part about this tracing paper, if you got lead on both sides, it'll transfer through. So I'm just going to draw it there, there, there. I'm going to go about halfway here. See it kind of shot through there, like so. So I'm stopping here. To the other side. that. Now this surface is round. Um, so my tail is ending somewhere in there. So if you just draw this on here, your side pocket is going to end up short because it's round. So you'll have to move it back. So I'm going to say my tail is right there because it's kind of where my bandsaw mark is. Or you could measure this distance from here to here. And then your side pocket is about that far from the front of your tail. So you just want to mark that on. Tail, so I'm moving it back there. Put that on. side yeah now oh, I got the side pockets drawn on thank you now we're going to get the, the top, this, these lines drawn on right here. So I'm just going to put that on the center line. So now my, my front of the shoulders are right here. I'm just going to draw a line straight down, run that across. Lined up pretty good like that. So when I lay this on here now it'll be I can just line this up with my bandsaw cutout and get the front of the shoulder on that line I just added and just trace this on. around do the other side
That paper you got, that's tracing paper, right? Tracing paper. Where do you buy your side? You can find that at Michael's or Dick well, Blick. They, or... they didn't have it, so I maybe have to go to a different one. It's kind of in the arts, yeah, art yeah, drawing, yeah. drawing area. It's in a roll, sometimes hard to find. Yeah. So I've kind of got this all established now, just some different lines for the side pocket. So once I get this far, the other thing I'll do is get that head on there, and I'll draw that the head on the wood so when I'm working on the body I'm not taking out any more wood than I have to to start. So I'll, I'll leave that leave that alone. Any questions so far? So I'll do a little carving here just to kind of show you what different tools work, what they do. A lot of times I'll start off with a draw knife, and what I'm going to do is... <laughs> <bust. laughs> start off with a draw knife. Okay. So it's white cedar, you want to start with the grain. You use two blow or in any direction. Of course, you probably used to use power or... So just carve into the both lines. Okay. As you can see, it carves super easy. <laughs> Hey, the owners get get mad. You put chips on the ground out here. No. So that's something you can use. Get rid of a lot of wood pretty quick as a draw knife. Um, then I'll use some other chisels. To, uh, Kind of get this carved out here. If I had a better table, I my bench, I could be carving away from me here. I'm breaking. Uh, Try rules here. About to start. I lock my lock my elbow. Oh, okay. So it's my wrist. So I really my elbow is gonna hit my chest before my knife does. Okay. But keep your knife sharp. I'm just I'm just gonna do clean up a little area here. So I kind of addition this out kind of creating a shelf. I'm going to do that for both sides. I'm just going to do a little bit here. So I'll use a little tighter gouge here to get more spill cut up here. White cedar is a really nice wood to do this. It smells good too. You can see I kind of carved this down. I'll do that all the way through on both sides, get a good visual of it front and back. I don't have a 90 degree in there. I'm using a 
tighter U gouge. So it's not a 90 degree, so you don't want a real sharp line, you want a soft line. Once I get that all done, then you can go ahead and round off um, other things you can use. I picked up this boat shave. I've never used this much, but I... Uh, Where'd you get that one from? Uh, from... Uh, 51 Bravo. 51 is Bravo. That, is that 51 Bravo? Yep. It looks like it. Yep. He's, he's got a website. He's, he's got some really nice website. knives. Yeah, 51 he's Bravo? he's got ones. carving yeah. knives. Yep, very nice, sh very sharp. I've got some, I've picked up a few of them. Plus I got this here about a year ago. And I've used it a little bit and it, it's sharp and does a nice job. I, I haven't done a lot of carving like this way. But, but it, it um, you can see it, it, it shaves off nice and I'm no expert at it, but it's a good tool that that, that works very well. Um, or a nice, a nice big flat gouges like this will work good. Round, what I'm doing is going to just be rounding to that. A lot of times when I get this in, I'll draw a pencil line on the inside of that, and that's going to help you see. Once you get that, using a pencil is a nice friend. Once you go somewhere and you um, put that line in, you, it helps you see if you're good from side to side before you go too far. So getting that pencil line in there, and then you're basically rounding to that pencil line this way and rounding this way. So. so your pencil is probably your most powerful tool. Yeah, it is. Yep. Yeah, even when you get on the head and exactly. doing the bill and drawing from the, the bill from to your head transition on both sides, it really tells the story. So any questions on any of this? Um, so I'll go ahead and round it all out. Um, cut in the tail, carve the head. So you do the head or the body first? I, a lot of times, it doesn't matter. Uh, sometimes I do the heads first, sometimes the body. So it, there's no right or wrong on that. <coughs> um, one thing, the head, you'll notice I, I've got three patterns. I've got the top front and the side so I'll, I'll now the key to this is a good bandsaw a good bandsaw blade um, and watching where your fingers are <laughs> um, if you're very confident with your bandsaw it's a nice trick you can save a lot of time remove a lot of wood and um, so what I do is uh, get a square block of wood make sure it's square otherwise it's not going to work square block of wood, draw your side pattern on it, on the block, and um, then I go ahead and if you have a drill press or have something you can drill a straight hole through, I use that to drill where my eye's at just to give me reference. Doesn't mean it's going to be center of the eye when I'm all done, but it gives me a good reference point. Then I'll take my top profile on the top of the block of wood, match that up from front to back, it's on there and make sure when you're drawing your patterns the length of this matches the length of this the length of your profile and and your front profile needs to be the same width as your top profile if you don't you're gonna be off so you, you just it's some planning so I'll draw this on the top of the block and then on the front of the block I'll draw this <coughs> So like cutting the body out, I'll go start on the top, coming in, coming in this way over the top, stop, do a stop cut, back out, the other side, stop, back out, do the front, stop, back out, so you're still in block form. Then I'll go ahead and turn it over on, the, on its end, on its end like this, and then I'll come in on the top and come in and 
through this little eye channel and onto the cheek a little bit, stop and back out, do the other side in, stop and back out, still in block form. And then uh, come back and then cut the side profile out. You can cut that all out, whole thing. Um, a bird like this is a little trickier, so if you got something with a neck, it's easier to do. But I, I would, I generally save this bottom part where you cut it out and put it back on there and either A, you can finish your cut through here and here. A lot of times, honestly, the wood is, I cut so close that it just peels right off. So, um, but if you want to finish cut it, you can, just be careful. So like I said, if you're doing this method, be confident in your saw, have a good saw, good blade, and watch your fingers. So that's, but it, it, it saves a lot of time for me and it, it's all there and just basically rounding off, it just saves a lot of time. And plenty of light. Yeah, yep. So, and, it, and if it, it ends up being off, like this one's not perfect, but it's close enough. But um, sometimes you end up, it, you get something that, it's like, what happened? Well, you gotta make sure this part, of the, this part of the bill matches your side profile of your bill. If you get it mixed up, it's not gonna look right. Or if your block isn't square, that's 100% the key. If your block isn't square, you're gonna, it's not gonna look right when you're done. And make sure your table is level. Yep, yep, that too, on your saw. Just make sure you get a square black that just goes yeah. right. turns south right away. Yeah. Yeah, it's a small piece of wood really. One other thing when I band sawed out this body, um, I've got a bottom board on here, so I cut that out with the body. Then when I'm setting it up, I'll draw a center line down the middle of the body. And then I'll drill, I'll measure in about two inches, two and a quarter. There's no right or wrong on that. But I'll start from the here and go about two and a quarter, two and a half inches from the front, two, two and a half inches, same from the back. And then I'll, I've got, I made these aluminum L angles. You could, Home Depot, Menards, they sell aluminum L angles. And you can drill holes into it very easily and hacksaw this in and works nice for this power arm. But I'll drill holes in, and um, these holes here are going to be my key holes. So it's not so they're used now for carving, and they'll transfer over to my key holes down the road. So once I'm done roughing out the whole body, I'll take these out and then hollow out the decoy. I'll start on. A, and the other thing is, when I cut this out, I'll save the cutout on the top here. Um, that's left over here. I'll save that for when I hollow. I'll put that, put the body in there, and I'll go to my drill press and with a Forstner bit, and and then knock out as much as I can with that. But by keeping this, it gives you something stable to put on your drill press, and it kind of protects the wood a little bit too. So, but yeah, there's all sorts of hand tools, um, patterns. These are just a bunch of different guide, gouges and knives. Um, another nice thing, I found this at Rockler. Um, these bow sanders are nice. You can make one on your own or buy one. I think this was 15 bucks at the time. But these are really nice for sanding and rounding things off. So like I said, you can make one easily or, or buy one. Um, What's the sandpaper? Is that from? They they sell uh, rolls, okay. like turning rolls, and they may sell it, sell it for this, and then you just cut it off to length. So if you want want less, you know, tighter, you can just cut it shorter. If you want longer, more of a bow, you can cut them longer. So. Any questions on anything? How do you mount your head to carve it? Um, I'll, a lot of times I'll just do it in hand. Oh, okay. Yep. So again, draw a center line on. The one thing is that you're happy with your pattern and you cut it out to match your pattern. 
you really shouldn't get rid of your center line until you sand. I mean, you may, you'll may you lose it a little bit in your bill detail and stuff, mm -hmm. but if you like your profile of your pattern and the profile of your cutout, draw that line on there and it won't, you don't get rid of it unless you want to change the look of it. Okay. Okay. So then it just, um, I use knives a lot of times and just, just chip away at it. Again, with white cedar, you gotta go with the grain or it's gonna chip out on you. Tom, I imagine you use a study bill to transfer your bill measurements on your head? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah for study bills. Yeah. Everybody's got their own way of doing it, but I kind of yep. like to start with the build first. If the build's wrong, the rest of the head's not going to have over covered. Yeah, good point. Okay. Yeah. Good point, Rich. So it's just kind of that, just a little chipping away here. Get to a point, then go to the other side and match it. Kind of that, like that, just mm. kind of rounding it. It's kind of working back and forth. But a little ways to go. Yeah. Yeah. But white cedar is really nice to carve it. It's soft and and a good sharp knife. You rough them out pretty quick. Yeah, you don't have any knots in that piece of wood top. That's I know. Fair. You get lucky every now and then. <laughs> There's one, Rich. <laughs> so, yeah. Any questions? Yes, sir. Um, so we, I've been getting it out of Knott's Knives out of Maryland. I think he gets it out of a supplier in Maine. Um, there is a guy, um, Dwayne Ong, I think he's from Michigan or Ohio. Um, I saw that he's a very good supplier too, I guess. Um, but otherwise, Northern Minnesota, I, I just think it's 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 tough to find anyone that um, cuts it down and mills it for us. But yeah. But save your best piece of wood for the head. So, yeah, if, yeah, so if, if you, you can. Uh, I've been getting my uh, lumber from Knott's Nice as well lately, and uh, every once in a while there'll be one board that's just nice, plain, straight, green. Save that one for your head. Yeah. Because that's the one that you really got to work the detail in the most. And every once in a while I get a bad piece where there's a lot of grain convergence in a certain way. And if you try to get some detail on the bill of the head, when you go to sand that, you get that hard raise of the woods. And if you sand it, you, all of a sudden you magnify the ridges a little bit. So you really want to make sure you save your nicest piece of butter for the head. Yeah. And white cedar is characteristic as knots in, in it too. So it's kind of part of it. Every now and then you end up um, getting lucky where the, you don't have any or many. Which is better, Tom? Do you, um, have you carved white pine? I've, I haven't in a long time, but 
does it, is it tougher than the cedar or are they comparable? I think white pine's a little tougher. There can be. I think there's good white pine. I know there's guys that use white pine for the heads because it probably is harder. But it's probably heavier and dense too. Um, the thing about white pine compared to white cedar though is aging. As your decoys age or you use them a lot in the water, if you do, um, white cedar will last a lot longer than white pine. White pine will soak up with capillary action. If you have any type of defect in your, if you knock it on the edge of the bowl, it soaks in water and if there, if it there's any, it. Yeah, any wood exposed or yep, anything. Yeah, exactly. So you have to be really careful. But white cedar typically doesn't have capillary action. It, it, it freezes when the tree dies. It kind of shuts it all off for some reason. So that's why, I don't know. I've, yeah. I've just had decoys that have looked terrible and all of a sudden they get rotten and black. If you don't seal them right, they right. turn yellow. Your whites will turn yellow. Yep, that's oh, really Yeah, they, I don't. I don't know what you call. It. Is it leach? I don't know what yeah. oh, yeah. the proper yeah, term. Yeah. Leach, that's, leach it in. Leach that yeah. sap or something out. I don't know. If shellac is the cure to that. Like, a well, I, I use um, spar varnish on mine. To, okay. To seal them. Yeah. Okay. Pat Godden told me that he uses Deft. Oh. Once he carves it, he uses deft, three coats yep. of deft, then he puts on his anything else on top. But sure. he starts with deft, and it's it's not good to smell. You should no. always mask up heavily with the right. It's bad. Yeah, yeah. But it works great. It's yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a good product. So, so what about basswood then? Where does basswood fall into that? Basswood's a good wood as well. There's good basswood and bad basswood, just like any wood, really. Um, basswood's a heavier wood, so if you want to use, you, a lot of people use it for decoys, you can use it for decoys, you just have to hollow it out well. Um, but it's a good good carving wood as well, and something you can find locally here easily or easier. In your backyard. So. <laughs> Neighbors. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's for Dave. The, yeah. the overhanging Dave. branches. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Or there's that high density cork too that someone brought in. Cork. Um, Tupelo is another good wood that, um, like a lot of competition type birds, they use Tupelo quite a bit or decorative stuff. It it's very light and it it sands like very nice and it's easy to detail easier to detail because the grain is real tight whereas cedar and pine and basswood it's just harder to um, get the detail out of it as but easy as but it's expensive yeah. and that's even getting a little harder to come by too yeah. so but that would be like that grows in like the swamps down like Louisiana up down through the Carolinas it's a swamp wood so, yeah. What Any, about cypress? I don't know. I don't think we should. Anyone familiar with cypress? Or? I mean, it's waterproof, but it's also a little bit tough. You know, we've done it with you know, woodworking uh, projects on some of the job sites. You get on it first, they have cypress, and it can be some tough wood. Oh, okay. The cypress, don't they just use the, like, the first three, four feet of it? Yeah, I know Tupelo is that way, kind of the bell part of it that's in the water, but I'm not sure about cypress. Well, I pay is pretty good, that'll last forever. Which one? I pay. I pay? Ironwood. Ironwood? Yeah. <laughs> It'll last forever, if you, but you'll never get done with it. <laughs> yeah. It's like carving a rock. Yeah. So. Thank you. Yeah. Here's a fun project. I thought, well, this is, I'll just do one swan in my life. <laughs> well, I'm working on two more right now. <laughs> I'm going to make them out of white cedar, so my project right now is uh, you can't find a piece of white cedar big enough to cut out a swan. So I'm trying to do my best Marv Meyer impression and, and glue glue white cedar boards together so mm -hmm. I'm in that process and it's so I'm kind of 
I don't know. I'm winging it as I go. How many, so, how many layers are you using? Two inch layers? But I used uh, I have four by eight cedar, white cedar. And I, I think my pieces were 50, about 49 to 50 inches long. So I cut two of them. So it's taken me two two of those boards per body. So I'm cutting about 31 inches off and then the remaining 18 inches I'm using on the sides where so I'm running two four by eights vertically gluing them together and then I'm taking the cutoffs and I've got enough to where it'll I'll glue it here and glue it back here so you're, you're gluing it like this and then coming in from the sides? Yep, from the sides so so far it's working I have cut I glued the two center ones together and I cut the profile and then I on my side ones I I transfer where I need those to be here and drew a line on my wood front and back and then I could draw my side profile on that so I got that part done so now I'm gluing them together and then, my, and then once I get them glued together then I can cut my top profile out so I've got a bigger bandsaw. It's 18 inches, <laughs> and it, it'll cut. It, it would cut this whole thing out, but I Tupelo. I would trust it, but with white cedar, I, I don't think it cuts as easy. You get with it open that much? Do you end up getting some blade drift? Or I think I think I would with white cedar. So I I I'm not attempting it. Oh, uh, right. So I'm, my goal is to have them out at Game Fair and carve on them out at Game Fair. What size, what size blade are you cutting? With I've got quarter inch. So the only part I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we'll see how it goes. Is cutting my bottom board. Uh, I may end up just creating a bottom board and adding it after the fact. If I'm gonna attempt to try to cut inch and a half off the bottom straight through. We'll see how that goes. But 